Welcome to this first session of the digital conference on uh, Southeast Europe and East Med, in which we will have a discussion with the Foreign Minister of Greece, Nikos Dendias, and former Ambassador to Greece and to NATO, Nick Burns. It's only fitting that uh, we would start with the uh, top Greek diplomat, since he has been traveling a lot lately, all over the world, but mainly in our region, and has uh, completed a couple of agreements with our neighbors, which show that Greece wants to have agreements with Italy and with Egypt. And we're also moving ahead with Albania on the uh, exclusive economic zones. The issue with Turkey is probably not our fault, but it seems it's Turkey's fault, but we'll see that during the discussion. Um, we will ask the uh, Greek uh, foreign minister what he thinks about the latest developments. And the latest developments, of course, is the US um, deciding on uh, sanctions against Turkey, which is not uh, something we are used to see and hear about. So what's the reaction from Athens? Well, I have to say that uh, the Greek reaction is the reaction of a member of NATO, a reaction of the country that looks to NATO as a stabilizing factor in Southeast Mediterranean, in Europe, in the world, and also as a force for peace as a force that contributes to peace in the world. In that context, I think those sanctions were necessary. They were necessary not to punish Turkey. That is not something that we wish to happen, but as a way to underline that Turkey has moved beyond limits, not just in purchasing and uh, acquiring the S-400 anti-aircraft system, which, by the way, endangers the life of the NATO or the NATO member countries' personnel in the future, but with its overall behavior in the area of uh, we live in, in the Caucasus, in Libya, in Syria, in Iraq, in our overall region. Do you feel a little bit upset about the fact that the European Union, and Greece is a member of the European Union, did not? react so forcefully as the U.S. did? Well, as you know, uh, well, I say, I, I have to be honest with you, I would have preferred uh, a much clearer language from our friends and partners. Yet again, European Union is a project to be. Uh, it takes time. We know that the European, Union, the European Union reacts slowly, reacts with unanimity between 27 member states, so it takes time. But I will underline the fact that even the European Union addresses now Turkey as a European problem, not just as a country having difference with one or two member states, Greece and Cyprus. Turkey is being viewed as a destabilizing factor in our region, and that says a lot. Now, it may take time for the European Union to arrive to the same level of imposing sanctions as the United States, but unless Turkey changes course, I think that's what is going to happen sooner rather than later. What do you say as Greece to people in the West, both in Brussels and Washington, who say that we want to lose Turkey, we want to not, we want to make Turkey change some of its policies, but we don't want to go all the way, as some ask, let's say in their view, Athens or Nicosia, because we might lose Turkey the West might lose Turkey, so it's a huge gamble. What's what's your response to that? Well, 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 question. This is a very interesting question because this is really a line uh, followed by those who speak and act against imposing sanctions. I'm, I'm telling that that's exactly the opposite. If we want to save Turkey for the Western world, we have to make clear to Turkey where the lines are, where the red lines are. Because Turkey is not just a stone, it's not a monolithic society. There's an internal political dialogue within the Turkish society. And by imposing sanctions, that is by declaring unacceptable and failed the policies followed by the present Turkish government, the policies of invasion in Iraq and Syria, the policies of traveling jihadists in Libya and in Caucasus, we are helping the modernizing element of the Turkish society. If, on the other hand, we allow this kind of policies to appear within the Turkish political dialogue as successful, then we are undermining that dialogue. 
the modernizing and western looking parts of the Turkish society. So it's exactly the opposite. That is how we read Turkey today. That by imposing sanctions, by explaining clearly, clearly to Turkey where the limits are, by obliging Turkey to follow, to fall in line with the alliance, we help to keep Turkey within the Western alliance. Um, I know that you have had, uh, you tell me, uh, a personal relationship with your Turkish counterpart, Mevlut Cavusoglu, from your years at the Council of Europe. I'm just wondering if this relationship has helped at all in this very tense and difficult period we're going through between the two countries. Well, I'm, I was always honest. I consider Mevlut Cavusoglu a friend. He, he was my friend, he is my friend, and I hope he will remain my friend. And I hope this personal relation between us two will help the Greek-Turkish relation go through these difficult times to calmer waters. And sometime in the future, I hope sooner again rather than later, we may arrive to an understanding. Uh, but up to now, up to now, and I'm, up to now, things have not fared that well. That is obvious. Any thinking right now of uh, a meeting with the uh, Turkish foreign minister? I doubt it, but you never know. Sometimes meetings uh, break the ice. So where are we on that front? Because I have recently met uh, Mavlut in Bratislava. Uh, at that time, I was promised uh, by the Turkish government that they would give us a date for uh, starting again the exploratory talks. As you very well know, instead of being sent a date, we will send a research vessel with a flotilla of corvettes and frigates, etc., etc., in uh, close to Castelloge. So oh, that <laughs> that didn't go very well. Now, for us, really, our position is crystal clear. What we're saying to the Turks, and I just heard it uh, from the lips of our prime minister in Parliament just a few minutes ago, is that Turkey should stop the provocation. Will allow for a period of time for things to calm down. And Greece is always ready to participate in a meaningful dialogue. But what do we mean by a meaningful dialogue? We mean a dialogue within the context of international law and international law of the sea, and a dialogue about the one difference we have with Turkey, the, continental, the delimitation of the continental itself and the exclusive economic zones in the Aegean in the southeastern Mediterranean. That is it. Are you hopeful that uh, we might have some period of calm, that we might allow the start of uh, the exploratory talks? Or uh, what's your feeling right now after the EU meeting, the European Council meeting, the US decision? And yeah, go ahead. No, I have to say that uh, uh, following the decision of the United States government and following uh, the conclusions of the European Council, there is optimism. There is some optimism. So if you would ask me a, a, to, to, to say what I'm expecting to happen, my answer would be, well, I'm sorry, I'm not a magician. But first of all, I do hope that Turkey takes the right message, takes home the right message out of these decisions, and B, that Tur the Turkish government decides that is in the favor of Turkey, of the Turkish people, of the Turkish society, to abide by international law and within a reasonable period of time to restart the exploratory talks with Greece. I have to say we are waiting for this date since March 2016, because back in 2016 it was Turkey that stopped the dialogue with Greece, not vice versa. So your message is that right now we are not in as tense a situation, a period, as we were a few months ago, because there was a moment when the Prime Minister noted recently that not that we were close to war, but it was quite, you know, tense. Uh, are, are we in a less tense uh, situation right now? Or? You're absolutely right. The, the times were not at all, and the situation was extremely tense. Uh, and that, that is something we have said openly to our friends in the European Union, to the United States government, to Secretary Pompeo, to everybody that was willing and wishing to hear from us at the time. Now that the Oruç race is back in port and the Turkish vessels flotilla are not cruising around southeastern Mediterranean, 
uh, it's, it's obvious the situation is better, but it's better. But we have to to allow for a period of time. Why? Because we would like it, we would like it to become clear that this is a choice uh, made by Turkey, not just a flag of convenience, not just you know a, a limited period choice, just to avoid uh, sanctions from the European Union or heavier sanctions from the United States. If that becomes apparent, then Greece is always willing to talk. Greece, regardless of government, always believes in that. And while you travel and you talk to the Americans and the Europeans, you also talk to your domestic political opponents. Uh, we have so many issues we disagree. Are you, do you get the broad political support a foreign minister wants in situations like this from the opposition party? In parliament in Greece? Well, I, I do, I, I'm sure you know, I'm meeting uh, all the party representatives monthly and sometimes even uh, uh, in shorter periods of time. And I'm trying to keep them all very well informed on what we're facing, what the situation is, what are the choices available on the table. And that's the instruction I have received from the Prime Minister. So that is a policy of the Mitsotakis government. I have to say, on the broader picture, the vast majority of the political system has supported the government in these different times. Well, we have differences, of course. We have differences of opinion. We have differences on, on, on how we, we describe things. And as you very rightly said, there's also an, an internal political audience. But yet again, in the broader picture, I think most of the Greek political parties see things in the right way and support the current government. Uh, lastly, I got two questions. They have to do with the U.S. Uh, first, what do you expect from the Biden administration uh, after January 20th? Well, first of all, uh, President Biden and also his team in the State Department and in the Ministry of Defense and in the Security Council has been people that are very experienced and the police consider them friends. Most of them know our area very well, know the Balkans very well, know the you know Greece very well, you know the context of the Greek-Turkish differences very well. So we are expecting them to be, uh, you know, from day one into the picture and help us address what is a very difficult situation with Turkey. We are looking very much forward to work with a new Biden administration. And finally, I was wondering: we recently um, lost, we meaning Hellenism. Uh, a Greek American who was maybe the most important one in the U.S. political system, Paul Sarbanes, former senator, former member of the uh, Foreign Relations Committee, and uh, I was wondering, I'm left with the impression you had met him. Uh, some thoughts on uh, his role in uh, this relation between the two countries, given well, the difficulty had all these years. Let me be frank again with this. It's a huge loss loss for Greece, it's a huge loss for the United States, for the American society, for the American people. So, Paul Sarbanes was a statesman, and that says it all. I was lucky to have met him, I was lucky to have received his advice when I was a young member of parliament, and I remember very clearly his words on how we should conduct ourselves towards the Greek-American relations and the friendship between the two people and the two societies. So, he will be missed, but he will not be forgotten. Thank you very much. It was a very interesting discussion. And uh, the next uh, discussion we'll have will be with somebody who knows Greece very well, and you know him too. He is the uh, former ambassador to Greece, Nick Burns. Uh, Mr. Foreign Minister, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. And now we uh, turn to uh, our next speaker, who is a very well-known personality in Greece, he used to be the ambassador in Greece. Uh, he looks young, but he was ambassador, he came to Greece 23 years ago. Uh, and he also was ambassador to NATO, under Secretary of State. And actually, lately, he was, uh, is um, an advisor, foreign policy advisor to President-elect uh, Biden. So in that sense, there are a lot of reasons why uh, his uh, knowledge and his uh, thoughts about our area matter. So, Ambassador Burns, welcome. And let me start with an issue which is actually on the news everywhere. It's not only Greece-related, 
has to do with the recent decision by the U.S. to have sanctions on Turkey. It's something that was talked about a lot. Now we're there. So uh, how do you assess this relationship between the U.S. and Turkey? And what do you think about this uh, act by the uh, U.S.? Well, Tom, first of all, let me say it's a pleasure to be with you. We've been friends a long time, you and I. And so it's always a pleasure to be with you. And, and I want to thank our mutual friend, Simeon Somokas, for organizing this forum. Um, I very strongly support the decision of the Trump administration to, um, to apply sanctions to Turkey. Turkey um, has, of course, as you all know, purchased and is now bringing online the S-400 missile system. Uh, that system is produced in Russia. And so it is absolutely impossible for the NATO alliance to connect the Turkish system to the NATO air defense system. It would be like, Tom, we were letting a cancerous agent loose in the NATO bloodstream. And uh, lots of countries, including my own, the United States, have asked the Turkish government to reconsider this decision. Turkey has not reconsidered it. And so I think it's appropriate. It's the right thing to do to apply sanctions. There has to be a penalty to the Turks for, for trying to give the Russians inroads into the NATO alliance. And of course, the major objective of the NATO alliance is to protect Europe and North America from Russia. <coughs> Are you worried that given the move, but also what the Western policy on Turkey is lately, we might or the West might lose Turkey? That's something a lot of people in Washington and Brussels are uh, talking about. I think we're at the most difficult moment in America's relations with Turkey uh, in well more than a generation. You have to go back maybe four or five decades to find uh, as difficult a time because the Turks have made this decision on the S-400, which is very dangerous. Uh, Turkey has become in many ways an autocratic country led by an autocratic leader. You can't really call it a democracy. So there's that problem. And third and of foremost interest, uh, Tom, to you and the audience in Greece is these very, very difficult, complicated relations right now between Greece and Turkey, where Turkey is unfairly contesting the sovereignty of Greece in the Eastern Aegean Sea, as well as in the Eastern Mediterranean, interfering with Greece and Cyprus and Israel on natural gas rights. And so it's about the most difficult time that any of us can remember. And it is important to sanction Turkey. Whether the Turks walk away, I doubt it. NATO still is important to them, but there may be a, this may be a time where you have to sideline the Turks. Interesting, Tom, you'll remember you and I really don't remember this, we're not old enough, but we remember reading about it, that when Greece went through its own military dictatorship with the junta between 1967 and 1974, Greece didn't leave NATO. NATO didn't try to kick Greece out, fortunately, but NATO sidelined uh, the Greek military dictatorship of that time, quite appropriately sidelined them. And we may have to, um, we may have to encounter a variation of that same theme now with Turkey. Uh, it's a heavy word, and actually, I want you to. Uh, I want to make sure that. I'm, uh, so, do you think that uh, Turkey is on the borderline of being a dictatorship, or? I think Turkey has ceased being fully a democratic country uh, at this time. Uh, not when you have so many Turkish journalists in jail, so many um, peaceful opponents of the Erdogan government in jail. So many former members of the Turkish military with whom all of us worked at NATO uh, in jail. And so um, Turkey, Hungary, to a lesser extent, Poland are the three members of NATO who are, which are exhibiting autocratic tendencies. Um, we've just finished a big report here at the Harvard Kennedy School where I teach on the future of the transatlantic relationship where we recommend, this is a joint uh, European American group, that there have to be penalties against the Turks, Hungarians, and Poles inside NATO for acting in, a, in an autocratic way. The European Union, as you know, the summit that was just held last week is facing its own choices on whether or not to um, have pen financial penalties, penalties ultimately against these countries because both the EU as well as NATO are democratic organizations. We're coalitions of democracies. We don't wanna have authoritarian countries uh, trying to harm us 
from the inside? Um, these positions are very interesting. I'm wondering, are these the positions that the uh, new president and the new secretary of state will follow on their relationship with Turkey? Do you have an idea how the new administration will deal with this member of NATO, which is strategically located, is a big country, but at the same time, as you mentioned, is authoritarian and creates problems with allies and other countries in its area? These are my personal uh, views. These are not the positions uh, of, I'm not speaking for the president-elect or the Biden team, I'm not, um, but I'm speaking about um, my views and those of my colleagues on the joint group, uh, the German Council on Foreign Relations, the Harvard Kennedy School. We just published our report. <clears throat> We've concluded that both NATO and the EU have to exact some penalties against these three countries, Turkey, Hungary, and Poland but their personal views to me. And I, I, I wouldn't want to predict what President-elect Biden would do. He's got a lot on his plate right now. He'll make those decisions, whatever decisions he makes, uh, obviously after January 20th. I turn to the U.S.-Greece relationship, which is very important to both, I guess, countries. Uh, let me finish with Tur on Turkey, actually. Um, its behavior in the area, do you feel, uh, given your diplomatic experience, will continue? Do you feel President Erdogan is pushing the boundaries and then he might look for some deal with the new administration and the European Union? Um, or will he continue going against, you know, um, logic, a lot of people would say? Let's hope that um, that President Erdogan will reconsider uh, his, his position on some of these issues concerning the S-400, concerning uh, his territorial disputes with uh, with the Hellenic Republic, with Greece. Uh, I hope he will. Turkey is a vital country for Greece, obviously, for all of us in NATO. We don't. We want Turkey to remain in these institutions, NATO and the Europe, and it ha NATO certainly, and its its relationship with the EU. But um, these are troubled times, uh, and so let's hope that there's a reconsideration by President Erdogan of of, of this this very aggressive behavior, which has created major problems in your part of the world. And uh, how do you see Greece these days? You were here in a very difficult period. Uh, yeah. Now there's a Greece in the last few years. Uh, and actually, I would dare say both the center left and the center right are following a similar policy towards the US. And also with uh, alliances with other countries in the area, important allies to the US also, like Israel. So how is uh, Greece seen days on a bilateral, but also on a regional level? You know, I must say, Tom, I think this is the, the relationship right now between the Greek government and the United States government is the best I have seen uh, in 40 years. And maybe you have to go way back to the 1950s and uh, early 60s to have a relationship where the two governments are aligned on so many issues. I give great credit to Prime Minister Mitsotaki, someone I know well and someone I admire very much. I give great credit, frankly, to the Obama administration and the Trump administration because they've both been involved in this. And uh, I've done this a number of times, but I wanna give great credit to a friend of mine, Ambassador Jeff Pyatt. Uh, I know something about what it's like to be the American ambassador to Greece, and Jeff has done it better uh, than anybody uh, in recent times. He's been incredibly effective, Tom, you know him. And uh, he's really uh, produced, I think, with the Greek government, a degree of confidence in the relationship. I'm sure we'll hear this, you'll hear it from the foreign minister uh, when you interview him, or do, when you interview him, a, a degree of confidence, of trust between Athens and Washington that had been missing uh, for many years. So it's good to see that it's back. And Greece's role, because we tend to talk about the uh, East Med, which is huge for us and the world, I guess. Uh, but also, what about southern, uh, southeastern Europe, where uh, Greece also plays a role and used to play a major role? It's coming back, I think, and it's uh, becoming again a leader in the area. How, how big is it for the Americans and the Europeans? But in this case, with you, the discussion has to center on the U.S. How would the Washington view Athens' role in the Balkans? 
When I think about the strategic importance of Greece, I think about our long bilateral relationship that goes back to the Philhellenes who supported Greek independence 200 years ago in 1821, 22, 23, 24, 25. I think about Greece's role in the Eastern Mediterranean, Greece's connections to the Middle East, certainly Greece's role in, the, in Southeast Europe, in the Balkan region. If you think about the fact that North Macedonia, Albania, uh, have come into uh, NATO. And you think about the fact that there's some of the countries of the Balkan region uh, need to be further stabilized politically. They need economic growth. It's natural that Greece, with an expanding economy, having recovered from its own economic crisis, can be a leader in this region. And I certainly saw Greece that way when I was the American ambassador during the Kosovo war. That was a very different issue. But now there's peace, uh, largely, in the Balkans. And Greece, I think, is an example to some of these countries of what they can become if they have market economies, if they maintain democracies, if they do not turn to authoritarianism or anti-democratic populism, which we see in some of these countries. You have to be concerned a little bit uh, by Bulgaria. You have to be, uh, we're, we're very concerned here in this country by Hungary. And you want some of these, all of these states to recover their democratic foundations and their market economy foundations. And actually, let me end uh, with something which is more uh, personal, not to all of us, actually. Uh, a few days ago, uh, a historic figure in the Greek-American community and also in U.S. politics, I dare say, uh, Paul Sarbanes, passed away. And he was a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. And, uh, you know, you dealt with him. Uh, you had to go through the committee to become an ambassador. Um, your thoughts on somebody who I assume with whom you dealt with as an ambassador, but also as a foreign policy uh, member of the foreign policy uh, world in Washington. Well, Tom, um, I was deeply, deeply saddened uh, to learn of the death of Senator Paul Sarbanes. I immediately sent a text message, email to his son, Congressman John Sarbanes, who is carrying on his father's tradition very ably. I remember Senator Sarbanes so well because when I was nominated to be ambassador to Greece, nobody was more helpful to me than in the U.S. Senate than Senator Sarbanes in giving me a sense of what the role of ambassador, the American ambassador in Greece should be. And then when I became ambassador, I was living in Athens. We encountered some difficult times during the Kosovo War. You'll remember, Tom, because you and I knew each other quite well during this period the 60, more than 60 demonstrations in front of the American embassy during the Kosovo War, a lot of, a lot of um, incidents of anti-Americanism in Greece, tensions between the two governments. And Senator Sarbanes was somebody that I could lean on. He was someone I could talk to for advice. He was in many ways, when I was ambassador, a mentor to me. He came out to visit uh, Greece, when I was, I was there a couple of times, I would see him every time I went back to Washington. And he was a constant source of very wise advice of someone who obviously was a United States senator dedicated to our country, but of Greek heritage. And um, he spoke Greek, as you know, he had a great fondness for Greece. It is a tremendous loss for the Greek American community, but for the United States as a whole, to see the passing of Senator Paul Sarbanes. So a real sadness here in the United States. He was a great friend of Greece. Thank you, Ambassador. So on that note, sad note, uh, we conclude this very interesting discussion. Thank you very much for being with us. Tom, thanks to you. Thanks to Simeon Samokas, and it's a pleasure to be with you as always.